order at 6.30, and um, we will um, propose going into non-public. I move we go into non-public for RSA 91A, Column 3, Section 2, Letter A, for personnel. All right, roll call, Miles? Yes. Denise, yes. Okay, we're in non-public. from Office Ricky Pasquale of his resignation effective March 23rd of this year. So I'm asking the board to accept his resignation with regret and to send them a letter indicating it. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we allow the chair to sign the letter. All right, we do. Uh, I'll second that. Um, definitely, it is with regret, so yes. we will make sure that that is in Thank you for your service. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Item number two, I have a purchase order here made out of the Scrappy County Sheriff's Department. Um, it's our annual fee for the tactical team in their supplies of $1,000. And that will come out of our conference and dues. And we've been paying that for over about four years now. All right. I'll move purchase order 1895 to Scrappy County Sheriff for $1,000 for an annual fee for tactical teams and supplies. All right, I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the last time that I have is I met with the folks with Homeland Security on Friday. And we talked about a number of grants. Uh, the first one is a 50-50 match for the generator. Um, so uh, we'll have that forthcoming in the very near future. Uh, the second one is uh, they will provide 100% funding up to $6,000 so we can provide the fire department EMS folks with some equipment for tactical gear in the event that there's an active shooter and they need to go and do a, a rescue operation uh, during, an, during this uh, event. As I show the warm zone, where they actually go on the police, the police protect them, they drag the, the folks out. Um, I'm going to be meeting with the fire chief later this evening to see if uh, his folks might be interested in receiving this equipment and this training. Okay. And the last item is uh, there's a new grant out there for nonprofits where um, Homeland Security will give them 100% funding to uh, increase uh, building security camera systems, alarm systems, and the like. And uh, I, first one I thought it was St. Mary's Church. And I reached out to them to see if that would be something that they might be interested in, and they are. Um, I just want to make sure and get your permission to do that for a nonprofit in my status as the emergency operations director in town. So. How many do we have in town? Four. Garrison? Garrison Players, American Legion. Church, church and the hospital. Yeah. Oh, they must have. Yeah, the hospital is yeah. yeah. um, I think it's a good idea if they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. So we're not involved with having to put money out. No. Okay. No. The, the nonprofit puts the money out. Okay. I just have to submit the paperwork as the town's emergency manager director. Yep. Yeah. So. It's it's like a guarantee that they don't put out the money and then get denied, right? Correct. Oh, okay. Right. It's, they, a, it's a hundred percent. They find out what the cost is. Yeah. They submit the application. Yeah. It's approved. Then they can purchase the equipment, pay for it. Got it. It's just like all the other grants that we do. Okay. Homeland Security, Highway Safety. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. You don't, you don't buy anything until you get it approved. You get it approved. Got or you get stuck with it. Yes. <laughs> okay. No, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. Is it worth checking with Garrison players as well? Or is it? Well, I guess I could reach out to them. I, you know, I did not think of them. Well, we also don't want to make sure it's not too much money and then it gets denied. Or does it? Well, it would be separate. It would be okay. separate grants. Okay. All right. Uh, the only problem with this is that the grant application deadline is March 15th. Right. Okay. So, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to Gary's players yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Or, you know, or if it's, you know, reincurring and they can do it next year or yeah, something. Maybe then. next year. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Right. That's all I have for you folks. Anything for me? I think so. 
want to thank you for um, the fast response in your tactical team yesterday. All right. I had a rabid raccoon. Oh, it was you? <laughs> <laughs> Wander into the yard and then wouldn't leave. Um, it wasn't afraid at all. Like, oh and it was the second one in 20 minutes. Um, Jim said that we had to take care of. Um, oh but, yeah. Warm day, I guess. Thanks, thank you. Have a nice all right, you too. Smudge from the dog, it's freaking out. I bet. Better inside, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I don't think anybody's out there. Is so the fire school highway planning to come no. in? No, they're not. Okay, all right. Um, um, welfare, we can do at the end. NHMA policy. Do you wanna, I'm sorry, do you want to go to community input? Oh, I'm sorry, some. community input. Too. Nope, all set. All right. Um, and then consent calendar. By consensus, okay? Um, I, I couldn't find the February 10th minutes. Um, I'm sure they're there, I just couldn't find them. So if, if we can... Is that the right date? That was our last meeting, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It would be yeah, yeah, I found that... Yeah, they were there. Okay. Um, I, oh, I, they were in my email. Thing. Hmm. Um, I you just... Can it. Okay. Let's do yeah, it. Just, so you I went and looked this okay. afternoon. And I struggle with the drive sometimes. So, um, is, is he intending to come and talk about the heat issue? I believe so. Okay, all right. Um, I'm not sure. All right, New Hampshire MA Policy Committee. So, um, so that goes back to the email that I sent the board today. Um, you haven't had a chance to really necessarily even read it, um, but I, you know, given that the announcement's been out there for a bit. I, th I thought I would put it on the agenda. Um, so it, it's twofold. Um, the first is, th that's about the committee. I, I'm requesting the board's permission to offer to serve on one of the three policy committees. Um, they have 15 to 20 members. Um, they meet on either Mondays or Fridays, five to six times in April and May. I wouldn't serve if it's on a Monday, because Mondays are too crazy, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a board night or not. Um, but if I can manage to get a Friday slot on one of the committees, I would like to serve as a human board. I did yeah. reply, I'm in favor of you serving, but I do not want you to use your personal time. Because whatever you learn from these meetings, you can bring back to our town. So I don't think it should be used as personal time. Yeah, I mean, it's five or six times. Yeah, it's five or six times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just think that there's things that you can do to bring back here. Yeah, so thank you. Um, further, that committee evaluates proposals that member communities submit as suggestions for potential policies um, to propose to legislatures for enactment. And so um, I intend to submit at least one relative to nitrogen mm -hmm. um, for committee consideration. It would probably only affect the 12 member communities, but at the same, as far as their MS4 permit, because they're the ones with the nitrogen permit, um, but it would really benefit all the waters in um, New Hampshire, and the small towns don't have the power to enact those kinds of ordinances. So um, it would really be instrumental in the ability to meet the new nitrogen permit or not. It's, it doesn't mean that if it were to pass and if you know, fertilizer were to go, to way, go away, that doesn't mean that we would necessarily get compliant. It's a, it's a small part of the puzzle, but it is still an essential part of the puzzle, and it's not something that we have the authority to do, but it lies with the state. So. Um, so there's that. The, the other one is relative to septic tanks. I don't know if that's, you know, because that's on private property yeah. and they would have to be retrofitted and we have no power to compel people to retrofit their septic tanks. Um, the state could, or the state could offer some kind of grant program to help implement retrofitting or something. I don't know if that's appropriate for legislation. But I was going to reach out to the other um, MS4 communities and, um, see if they wanted to chime in on 
the draft of that legislation or whether or not that would even be workable. But it's again something that would be germane to the committee and the committees of the too. So do you know that the, the, the septic ones is based on the age of a septic tank versus it's any septic tank? Um, it's probably any septic tank, but of course it would be more necessary or more helpful on an older one or a family one. True, true, then they but, would have to meet code based on But that. theoretically it would be all septic tanks that would need to be upgraded if that part of the situation were to be, if we were to be compliant in that way. I can't even say compliant because we, we can't comply by compelling private property owners right. to do that, but right. yes, it would, it would be all of them. <coughs> what's the change? Like, what's the upgrade? I have no idea what the technology uh, is, or what's involved, or what the cost is, or anything else. <laughs> so, um, if there are no objections, I'll try and work with that. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, do you explain to Miles if that I signed? Oh, um, well, I was going to save that for. Um, oh, okay, that's fine. For, for, for town administrator. Okay? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, all right, guys. You're next. Bob, did you want to say something to them? Nope. Is that way back? I'm just waiting for him to get done so we can have a chat. Okay. Very good. <laughs> a couple things we can chat about. I came up with another one for you. Good evening. Hey. Uh, a couple things of business first to take care of. A couple of POs. Score away. Uh, first one is 1799. It's uh, for annual dues for the Seacoast Chief Fire Office of Mutual Aid. It's 300 bucks. And it'll come out of our association due uh, line. I'll move purchase order 1799 to Seacoast Chief Fire Officers Mutual Aid for $300 for the annual membership fees. Second it. Any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we're all familiar with what that's for, right? Which of course aye. is the list of two. Would you like to explain? <laughs> Oh, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> that, that is the Seacoast Chiefs now has 42 member fire departments in the Seacoast region, Massachusetts and Southern Maine. Basically, it's uh, an organization that meets monthly for chief stuff, all kinds of new regulations, yeah. uh, any kind of code changes. Just uh, updating different fire departments, whether talking about run cards or training opportunities or whatever it is. It's just one way that this large and the group is getting larger when we first got involved. Years ago, it was 20 fire departments, now it's 42. So it keeps growing and they see the, uh, the uh, advantage to being a member. If we have a, a large incident, a la you know, a train derailment or something to do with a bus accident that requires large, large response or a specialized response. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of it was supported by them because they have all that specialized equipment that the town in no way could afford. So that's why we keep up our membership with those people. It's pretty important for what they can provide us. Um, the second purchase order I have is uh, 1809. It's the quality fire protection and it's for a total of $665. Basically, it's for the hydro certification of all of our SCBA models. They need to be done in five-year intervals. They have to be certified. Uh, they go through the test. They drain them down, pull them apart, fill them back up, test them, make sure everything works. And it has to be done, like I said, in a specific, a specific amount of time. So we just had all of ours done. Um, it's going to come out of our Scott Air Pack line. We haven't touched that line yet. So like I said, it was for $665. Okay. And the spin-off of some of that is, uh, that's all 19 of the models that we have got done. And when Berwick had their incident with Captain Barnes, that was one thing that was found in the investigation that they had not uh, kept up on, was the uh, 
servicing and hydroing of all the bottles. So that was one of part of the fine that they had to pay because they weren't keeping up with that. So hmm. this is our stay ahead of game moment. Okay. Uh, I'll move purchase order 1809, quality fire protection, $665 for SCBA bottle. I can't read what that. Certification. Certification. I'll second it. And 665 I got 665 but what kind of bottle? SCBA bottles. And they all passed. They all passed. They all it's yeah, Scotty or Cat Bottles. breathing apparatus. All oh. right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they're not underwater, so they're not scuba. All right, any further discussion? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those bottles have a service like everything else. They're like 10 years. And you can still buy a bottle for 300 bucks, now it's 500 bucks per bottle. And you have to replace them when we have a rotation that uh, the chief took takes care of. We'll buy bottles as needed to stay out of the so we don't have one big expensive one in one moment. So that, that's the way to do that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I just have a couple of questions for you before we go to our next thing. When I picked these up the other day, these are all the registrations that are now going to become permanent for the fire trucks. They have a line on it for signature. Is that you? No. Is that them? Or is that me? Um, it's typically been the department head who would sign okay. their own their vehicle registrations. Okay. I, mean, I just wanted to make sure before I go and do that, because I know I had some other stuff and it was like, no, we'll sign on. So I just wanted to make sure, because that will get done this week. But on every one of these, it has to have a signature. So it makes sense, but I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page that everybody's aware that's what's going to happen. And that's on permanent fire trucks. We don't have to go chasing an annual like we might with our own vehicles. They're going to uh, now get done, get all registered with this stuff, and as long as we have the vehicle, it's the same thing. So we don't have to chase that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that'll uh, change over this week. Okay. Uh, I guess the next thing that I want to go over, and that's one reason why Sean is with me, is I have some information, and he has some information, and you've been kind uh, of tip of the iceberg when I discussed it with you. I think we'd like to discuss it under uh, non public. Okay. Is it employee related? No. It's system related to the fire station. System? System. We, we have to know like under what qualification that it falls under non public because we can't do it if we want to. We have to do it only if it qualifies. So I will pull up for you what qualifies and you can okay. tell me. We know what I discussed with you the other day. Um, well, issue with oil tanks. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not offhand sure why. I don't think offhand that that would qualify, but fine, again, I'll, I'll show you what does. And, um, How about deep? Personnel or legal yeah. or defamation of character. Yeah, no, we're not under any of that stuff. Finances and all that kind of stuff. Or if it could jeopardize somebody's reputation or jeopardize some future um no, I don't think we fall under any of that, so I just you know, thought maybe at one point it might be Legal advice. I don't think we're going to find any. So. If at any point it looks like it's going to come out of the conversation, you can call it and come mm -hmm. in public. Well, we've been having trouble with the heating system. Mm -hmm. and we kind of started some of that. You have this quote to replace it. started when we lost one of the heating units that was seen out of the station. Mm -hmm. That happened probably a month ago. And we've been chasing them down for a quote. We got the quote, so it's 
started with this. And ever since this, what happened was we had a call one night because it was just leaking and they had all kinds of issues with it. They isolated it outside of the system. And when that happened, shortly after that, we started having position problems with the main heating room. To the point of four times we've had to call them for no heat calls. And the last one was about last weekend before we had that below zero stop. So this week, last week, they sent their so-called expert in to try to figure out exactly why we're having issues. We thought it might have been related back to the loss of this one heating unit, but apparently that's not the case. So um, as they came back each time, one time they said, um, when I was there with them once, the oil line, which comes from outside from the tank, might have been frozen because he drew it out and had bubbles and it wasn't clear and all like it should be. And I don't even know how big the tank is. You got any idea? Harry, have any idea? He might. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure this is original. I didn't think you could put an oil tank underground. Well, not under current standards. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. Okay. So that's kind of where this is going to lead to. Uh, it was way before him. Before that. It was way before him. So. Well, I'm probably him or something. I mean, I don't know. I have an idea where it is because I'm like, as I know where the fill is. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that was the first thing I did with that. The second time was on another one of the cold days. I said there was too much cold air coming in through the intake on the side of the building, and when it got into the actual firing spot in the burner, it was should be very wide like this, and because the cold air made it narrow, so it wasn't firing. That's what they were telling me. I'm not a heating technician, but I've learned a lot of them <laughs> in the last few weeks. So they took all that intake stuff off, left it open, and it was working fine. They came back again with another number call. And again, they likened it to the fact that it might have been frozen. I went outside because this copper tubing that comes out of the ground runs into the building, and I uh, put some insulation on it. Right. On the tubing? On the tubing outside. I secured that. You know, like you do any insulation on your pipe in your basement. Mm -hmm. So I took care of that part. And then when they came back again the last time, they hooked all the intake in, the incoming air back into the system. They were all fired up and everything. But they were talking about there may be the tank may be leaking. Mm -hmm. The tank being or the plumbing too is, a, is the other thing that they said maybe happen. Yeah. Maybe. I, uh, short of doing some sort of you know testing or whatnot, I don't know how we determine that there is or is not a leak. So I don't know where we want to go. With that. I have asked Tom Clark to reach out to you because I think he might be helpful. If nothing else, he might be able to recommend vendors who could help you figure out more specifically what the problem is. And and. Particularly what's going on in the soil, if anything. Yeah, because if it is, you know, so that's another whole can of paint. It's, a, it's an order of thing. It's really a leaking wind chair fuel. I mean, it, you would have to order it more often, right? Or are you just assuming because it's been so cold that you're using I don't, uses I don't do using. anything with, I don't, I don't do anything with ordering or any of that stuff. No, I know, but, oh, who did that? Uh, right, so if you would have, I don't see the trend. trend. I don't see I, I'd have to look, actually. That's an interesting point. I never see that. Whatever. Yeah. I know it comes here. Actually, how often right here. they fill it? I guess it was filled up just for the last snowstorm. And my guess is it's, it's got to be a bigger than 250 gallon tank of ground. It's got to it's got to be bigger than the whole type of tank. And I'm guessing 500 gallon tank. I'm just guessing. Yeah. As and big as that station is, and what the needs size. are, yeah. and as big as that heating unit is. It's not going to tell you a trend. It's not going to tell you a trend. Well, might tell us. It'll tell you how many gallons were last delivered, if anything, but not the trend. Yeah, I don't, I don't know trends as far as what we're doing here. So, so talking to the tax, yeah. they said 2010, 2012, they were supposed to have replaced the single copper line running in cement, but that was no longer legal. So part of the question here is, is we replaced the heating unit before then, why didn't they bring that up to code as part of the furnace replacement? So there's really part of what they're thinking is, is the reason we're drawing air is because there's a little link leak in that copper line or in the tank and that's why when they're drawing it up they're seeing the oil's not looking the way it's supposed to. So, have we always had time So, I know it used to be owned by something else. I would just be careful about names and what's going on and 
um, go into the, go into non-public if you want to. Like, you know, we, we have to be careful about attaching names to actions. I just want to. Air vendor. I understand, but we wouldn't want to disparage your reputation. I, I just, I just I'm not saying question. that you are. I'm just, I'm just saying that we're, we're leaving a, a down, down there. So, um, as far as I've been aware, for at least as long, as, you know, the six years that I've been here, yes. That's 2014, so it's before that. So I don't know before that who the vendor was. Are you asking us to go into non-public? Um, no, I'm just saying if you're going to... Well, I have more questions, so... Um, then it might be better. Okay. I want to go into non-public. I don't know what the letter is. Um, um, it's C. Uh, for C. RSA 91A. No, C. Say C. Yeah, it's C. Just 91A, column 3, section 2, letter C. Oh, C here? Okay. Reputation. 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 Alright. Yeah, they delivered us. Both? Oh, camera. Hold on. We have them both. 275. Miles? Yes. Denise, yes. We're in non public.
they're not likely to do that until the deadline. So I'm going to share my draft response with the other small communities and encourage them to um, either sign it or revise it and sign it or consider sending something for a response because without hearing from small communities, the EPA and DES can't know the impact and how it's different than larger communities. Who are the small communities other than us? They go south. Um, so there's so there's Exeter, which is of course much larger than us. Most of them are larger, but not necessarily as large yeah. as Dover and Rochester. Yeah. Um, Summersworth is um, New, um, Newington and um, Newmarket. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Newfields. Um, I think Newfields might be. I'm not sure, but it, it so it goes south, and yeah. that's so not like Milton. Like it doesn't start up there. No. Um, Milton actually might be. They're mostly south, yeah. but Milton might be because it's on the river, river, so that would make that's sense. Oh, it's the south of the rivers. Right. Yeah. Well, right. It's it's all it's all um, communities directly on waterways that are feeding directly into the Great Bay Estuary, and it's all about the health of the Great Bay Estuary. The other thing that the communities are requesting is a scientific peer review of the data that is compelling. Um, the EPA and DES to um, create this nitrogen load limit as it is. Um, it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to meet that level, but also it's not really clear that that nitrogen level is going to have the um, intended effect or, for, or that you for, can't have an inf that intended effect with more nitrogen necessarily. For us to meet it or just meet it in general? All of the communities are finding that it would be so. So that's the experience of small town, and that is my comment: is that we don't really know how this is going to affect us. We don't know the cost of upgrading the water sewer district. Um, it, we don't know how we can implement the changes they're requesting um, on private property, for example, because we can't regulate um, fertilizer, and because we can't go on private property, and because. Over 50% of the nitrogen comes from atmospheric sources, so mm. we can't, you know, we don't have on-staff engineers to help us run the data to determine what is, how, how will our total nitrogen decrease if we do X. All, all the larger communities have run those models. Um, they have, they are all experiencing between 8 and 12 percent controllable land mass within their jurisdiction. In other words, 8 to 12 percent of um, the land in their city or town is owned by the city or DOT. So you can, you can impact change mm -hmm. in those areas. But that leads, you know, leaves most of it clearly the you know, area that you really can't impact under current law. How, because you can't go on private property and, and like that. So, um, because we don't have on staff engineers, we're at a further disadvantage that we can't really quantify the impact of this permit. I was really glad to see that Clem Michu attended the hearing. The commissioners are aware of what's going on, and I'm sure they're trying to work on it. They're now um, in the loop with um, the area community, so they'll be kept informed of shared information and like that. So, and, and likewise, I will share with them my draft comments for them to consider, and they're aware that I'm doing that. So, that's going on. Um, Denise signed a letter that was drafted by the city of Dover, re, um, compelling the Department of Environmental Services to conduct a scientific peer review of the science. Um, like I just said, there's no real indication that the level of nitrogen that they are prescribing on the communities is um, really going to have the desired effect in Great Bay Estuary. It's not clear that you couldn't tolerate more nitrogen um, and, and still receive the desired effect. Um, and also, um, that it's just not, it, it does not seem scientifically feasible to accomplish those nitrogen load limits given current technology. So there's a lot of concern about that. 
um, that letter was signed by all the 12 communities going to DES, compelling them to ask for a scientific peer review so that they can substantiate the reason for the permit being written the way it is. So one might hope that we'll hear about that soon. Um, they, you know, um, much like any other governmental entity, you have a public hearing, you hear from the people, but in the end the governmental entity can do what it will, and mm. we don't know what they will. So This is the state to you. Yes, so this is all a result of um, the Clean Water Act. Okay. The Environmental Protection Agency has, you know, found these key, in, you know, key areas that are at risk or endangered. Yep. The Great Bay Estuary is among them. And so anything felt at the local level comes through the state. Um, it, it never goes directly from federal okay. to the local level, and so DES is the intermediary. Um, they are working with DES. DES and EPA have worked together to create the language and the requirements um, that would be imparted on these 12 communities. It's really interesting and worth noting that we are experiencing this differently in New Hampshire than those communities across the river are experiencing it. Um, Elliott and South Berwick and Berwick are also in these four communities, but the state plays a much greater role in the implementation of that permit and um, mitigating the nitrogen over there. So th there's also 42 other communities in the Great Bay Estuary watershed who are not subject to any nitrogen load limits. So the burden is on the 12 communities because we're directly on the river, even though these other communities play a part in the contamination of that water. Mm. So how can you so, ever clean up what you're supposed to be doing if they are continually to put it in? Well, so there's no way to avoid putting nitrogen into the water. But, but if, they, if they don't have any restrictions right. of what they can do, but we we do. Right, we're paying the consequences how, for other people's actions. And how, how do you ever get it where you need to be if not everyone is on that same task? That is one among many problems with this, yeah. yes. So is this just the normal course of events where they ask for everything and then you negotiate something, but we don't know? We, <laughs> we I wouldn't say that there's anything normal or regular about this, and we'll see what happens. It, it is true that um, the last go around with NS4 permitting, they um, it was requested that they do a state that the state do a peer review, mm -hmm. and they ultimately did, and that changed, I believe, the, the requirements of the permit. So, you know, there can be other factors involved in how state agencies come to the determinations they do, and, mm -hmm. and science is where it should be, but that's not always, right. you know, what influences policy. Mm. So. So we'll see what happens with that, but also know that it's not going to end with nitrogen. But um, you know, so here we are in our second year of a stormwater permit. We're about to get a nitrogen permit, and then at some point down the road, we're going to be subjected to a phosphorus mm -hmm. permit potentially. So you know, we, we may eventually be hiring a part-time, you know, consistent engineer to deal with all these things because it, they're complex. And because we don't understand our systems and how to, you know, I, I, I would try not to project that. But we'll see where this is going. It's, it's just, I, I don't want you to think that this is the end of it because yeah. clearly there's more. Oh, there's more. Yeah. Okay. So there's that. On another note, um, on Thursday I'm going to the Stratford Regional Planning Commission meeting. I understand Jessica will also be attending. Herbie Weta will also um He's going to training tomorrow for being a commissioner, and, and I think he's going to intend to. I think he's attending to, intending to attend on Thursday as well. Um, and that's what that form that? is. Herbie Wada. Oh, great. Um, that's the um, that's the form um, to officially okay. make him a commissioner with the Stratford Regional Planning Association um, commission. So um, Ed and I are going to be going up to that meeting to. Um, talk about how we were able to change what happens at the transfer station. Um, 
this is where being a small community has really benefited us that you know, because we have a transfer station and we don't do curbside pickup and we're relatively small, we were able to change pretty quickly with the market and we haven't suffered financially with the downfall of single stream mm -hmm. the way other communities are continuing to suffer because they're not able to change systems as quickly. And that's particularly true of curbside pickup communities. So um, in any case, um, people are still working to try to figure this out and, and in, I are going to go up to Rochester on Thursday and help explain um, how we got to where we are. And Senator Waters, I know, has been on a committee looking into this as well, and he's going to explain the committee's findings. So that's Thursday. Um, that's really that. Um, the town report is getting printed this week. Things are coming to a close. Um, still working on the voter guide addendum. Got thrown a loophole with the, um, the whole nitrogen experience last week that um, became much bigger than I had anticipated. So, okay. All right. so there's that. All set to move on. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of purchase orders. Who should this one be made up to for, for window envelopes? Uh, I'll take care of this one. Um, I swear we did no, this we already. Did that. Didn't we do a genetic? Yeah, to Jeanette Gagney. I know we did last time. Uh, yeah. Yes. I know you did. Yeah. Okay. Why we so I think because the invoice this year maybe. Maybe she just didn't remember that we okay. had done it. I don't know. If we took the no, I, Well, I'll take care of it. Okay. Yes, I will. Just we'll make sure that we do because she only yep. did one meeting, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I know we signed it. Yep. Okay. I'll uh, move purchase order 1909 to BMB printing for two hundred eighty dollars for. Uh, envelopes for motor vehicle and dog license renewals. All right, I'll second it. At least that special. Oh, is it got the they're turning Yeah, they're oh, letterhead okay. envelopes. Okay. Window letterhead envelopes. Okay. Any questions? No. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, sorry about that. 
but then he's not, it's not he has his fine, that's one. Well, and that's okay because oh. you're really the governing body. Okay. So. All right. Question: Who is the who did, who is the um, town report dedicated to this year? Um, it's dedicated both to Ed Jansen and um, Ron Brown. yes, Ron Brown. Retired fire chief. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. No. All right. Uh, uh, when you're, when you're, like, before you, I just don't want you to adjourn. Okay. Yeah. Before you adjourn. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll move we go into non public session for um, RSA 91A, 23, section 2, let us see, for the welcome. Okay. I did see you. Well, yes, well. It's reputation. That's what well qualifies for welcome. Oh, uh, so, no, uh, yes. Miles? Uh, yes. It is, yes. We are non public.